Hey guys, so I have been patiently waiting all summer long to get some crepe myrtle flowers um, photographed and they've been, they were, I don't know if they're normally this late, but it sure seemed like they were late in coming. Um, but I managed to pluck a few off a bush and I uh, have this cute little jar that used to be a candle so I made a little bouquet and took a photograph and I really like the way this actually is designed. So that's what I'm going to paint today. And so part of this is going to be loose and, you know, really not concentrating on any kind of detail. But then we've got the glass jar and that is going to take some time. Um, because when you're painting glass, it's really important to get all the little light and shadow and reflections and stuff in order to make it look realistic. Um, so I have drawn this out on my paper and I think I, I took this off of a block. I think it's, um, it's probably Fabriano Artistico, but I'm not positive. Um, and you can probably see if I zoom in a little bit um, the sketch and I'm going to zoom back out and what I feel like is this area is a little too uh, heavy handed on the pencil so I've got this I need a new one because these actually when you're rolling them around and kneading them and stuff they get the oils from your hand on them so hopefully I'm not going to transfer that onto my paper but I've kind of got it formed into a cylinder and I'm just going to take it and go it's not very smooth but just kind of roll it over that pencil to lighten it up a little bit so I'm not erasing I'm rolling and just kind of getting up some of that pencil and some of some of the importance of doing that is um, not necessarily for me. I don't mind seeing the pencil line through it, but sometimes it comes through too much. But also um, with the pencil, you can get some of the graphite into the paint. So in order to kind of avoid doing that so much, I wanna get some of this pencil up. So that's the purpose of that. And I feel like I lightened it up enough. So the next step is gonna be getting some grays mixed up. I'm gonna be using this little Meaden palette that I got. Um, I got this one off of Amazon. I'll leave a link in the description. And I've got it filled with all kinds of different colors and I will try to name them. I'm not really positive what some of them for sure are, but I've got my blues over here and I can mix up some grays using either ultramarine blue or cobalt blue and burnt sienna. Um, so that's what I'm gonna be doing. I also have this color um, let me show you the tube. I just got it not too long ago. It's by Daniel Smith. It's called Shadow Violet. So I'm going to use a little bit of that in there. And I also have some of this quinacridone coral squeezed out on that little palette. So I've got that. And my greens are going to be probably, I'll probably be pulling from the leaf green uh, here's Hooker's Green. It's in a weird place, but I didn't have room over here. Probably should have switched those <laughs> now that I'm looking at it. That would be better over there. Um, so those are, I've got Viridian here. I think this is, it might be green gold. I'll be pulling just from those and probably some of the yellows. Yellow ochre, I believe. Uh, Nicolazo yellow and probably permanent yellow deep right here. Um, anyway, Hansa Yellow is maybe one of those in there. So if you don't have these colors, just pull from what you do have. Um, you know, just experiment with your own 
palette. Uh, that's really important because, you know, you're likely to be painting other things and not painting with me all the time. Um, so let's get started with this. Um, I'm going to start, let's bring this up over here. I have a really awkward little space. I don't have, I have my big palette over here, but I want to use this little one and I'm right-handed. So I really need um, a little shelf there or something, but at least this is little and I can start by hopefully not dripping on my paper, but here's this shadow violet. It's kind of a a purpley, which is really pretty. It'll work really well in that glass. Um, I'll pull a little bit of, I should be working over here actually. Let's switch that around. Um, I've got my cobalt. I'm gonna set that, ooh, it's so dangerous to have it right there, but I need it where I can get right to that um, jar there in the photo. So I'll have this little bluey gray. Um, look at how pretty that is. That shadow violet is gorgeous. Um, I think I'll also pull in a little bit of this yellow ochre. We've got some yellows in those reflections and not quite sure how that, that'll probably be good. So there's a little of the shadow violet mixed in with that yellow ochre to give us kind of a yellowy gray. If you don't have shadow violet, which you may not have, um, you can also do a cobalt blue with, I believe this is my burnt sienna right here. Um, a little more blue, a lot more blue probably. Um, that, no, that was probably not, but I'll save that green. Um, let's go up here. Maybe that is my burnt sienna. That's kind of a red. Just depends on which burnt sienna I have on my palette. That's red too. Um, those are all kind of orangey, but those are uh, also going to gray that cobalt blue down because it's the complement of the cobalt blue is more on the orange side of things. So let's get a little bit more blue in there and there's your gray. So if I wanted to make that a little bit more violet, more purpley, I could get a little bit of Quinn magenta and add that. And I've got more of a violet gray. So you can adjust your grays by adding. Uh, so basically you're going to get a gray if you have complementary colors mixed together. And also you're going to get a neutral gray you're going to get that by mixing your three primaries, um, blue, red, yellow. You're going to get a gray by using those three colors. And what kind of gray or what, what hue, <laughs> I'm trying to think of the word. Um, you're going to add a little bit more red if you want it to be more on the violet gray. You're going to add a little bit more blue if you want it on the more blue gray and so forth. So I'm getting a variation here and I'm just going to set this up here where I can reference it and I'm going to start by grabbing a paper towel. It's always important to have that paper towel handy so you can soak up and keep um, control of the water on your brush. I do want to dampen this. Um, so some of the edges are going to be soft in here to start with. So I'm just going to get that sheen down to the little line I've got drawn out here. And I think I'll come up into here with that water. I am using a number four round by Princeton. This is a velvet touch 
some of my very favorite brushes. So I'm just continuing to wet that paper. The longer you moisten it without it becoming a big puddly mess, the longer you're going to have to work with your um, paint because the paper is moist through, not just on the surface. So I added a little bit and we're just going to touch in and let that, I'm tip of my brush and watch that spread, leaving a little light line. I'm going to go over here and get a little variation and just let that flow into the water that I laid down. And let's come up here. Let's get a little kind of going between petals, but I want to just kind of get a little more brown and Let that just flood, very tip of my brush. There's a light edge up here at the top. I'm just gonna soften that and come over in here. I didn't add water all the way over, but I am okay with that. So let's go and Come on down into this area. There's some greens in there because of the stems. So I'm going to start touching in a little bit of green and even come up like it would be a stem. This is very kind of detailed part of the painting. I can also come in and just touch in a little bit of water and get some blossoms happening. And I'm going to come down into here. With my water. And because I'm um, more detailed right now, I'm holding it closer down here to the ferrule. When I want it looser, I'm gonna come more up toward the end of the brush. When you're closer to the ferrule, it's you've got more control. Um, further away, you've got less control. And there's a little bit more of that brownish gray. And we're just gonna, what is happening in a, a jar like this is it's reflecting everything around it. And you're also seeing what's inside that jar. There's a leaf down here at the bottom. I'm just gonna touch in a little green, come along here with a damp brush and soften it so it's not just standing out so much. And then I'm gonna just keep kind of touching in. There's a little more orangey gray here. And I rinsed my brush, I'm gonna soften that. And I'm gonna grab some more of this yellow ochre and dab off. I still have color on my brush, so I'm gonna just touch in, grab a little bit more, touch in just a little bit there. And add the finest of lines down here at the bottom, very tip. Part of it's going to have a hard edge because this is dry down here now. And some of it's going to be a little bit softer because this is wet. 
And I think I'll do a little bit of, uh, let's do a little phthalo blue too. I think that's this one, nope. Um, nope, nope. <laughs> do I have phthalo blue in here? Um, let's just get that one, it's ultramarine, and just come in a little bit at the bottom there. I'm gonna soften that out just a little bit. Okay, so, now this is still a bit damp, I believe. So I'm gonna come right up to this line. And just come straight down into that and add a little deeper values. Thought is kind of running through my head that later on we can come in with a little bit of gouache and do a little bit of extra light values. All right, so I like that little side and this could use a little bit more. Without getting too carried away, I wanna come over here next and let's soften that out. Um, and get this wet. We're gonna keep the center area, that label, untouched as much as possible. This is gonna be white, or in there there's gonna be a reflection, so I'm trying to stay away from that as well. And then we've got kind of a bluey, green, gray in here. A little bit, just kind of blend all those colors together. That wants to be white. I want to keep that light. And all the way up in here, we're going to be darker. A little more blue in this. Ah, want that to be white, remember? A little darker in here. Touching in a little bit of water to kind of spread that around. Don't want it quite so, quite so saturated. Right in here is a stem. I'm going to get some of this brownish gray and add a stem real quick. A little bit of that blue. Want it kind of fuzzy. There's another one coming up in here.
Okay, and through here, more grays. And whatever is behind, there's also some greens in there, so we can add green for the leaves, a little bit muted. Some of the gray, trying to leave a little bit of white on those lip, uh, lip of that jar. So have to pay really close attention to your shapes in those in that jar. Grab a little oops, what is that? A little bit more blue. Where is my burnt sienna? That is not it. That's it. It's more orangey than. It's really actually pretty dark in here. Okay, I'm gonna um, let this dry. And once it's dry, come in and we'll do this loose floral part of this. And that's gonna be really fun. And then afterward, take a step back and see what else we can do in here to add to this glass. And the tricky, tricky part is gonna be the lettering. So stay tuned and let's uh, let this dry for a bit. All right, so this is completely dry and this is the fun part. I wanna actually mix up a couple of greens to dab in or stroke in um, as I'm painting. So paint to water ratio is gonna be pretty important here. I'm gonna be spritzing. This is just a cheapo bottle I got at Winco. I like because it just kind of has some random drops. It can be fine little drops and then a big drop will plop in there, which is great. Um, so the paint that I put into that is going to dilute. So if it's too diluted already when it's on the palette, you're just going to uh, lose it here. And when it dries, it's going to dry really super light. So the paint to water ratio ratio um, ratio is important. The creamier, uh, it's going to be creamier, the paint that I drop into that um, droplets that are on the paper. So Let's go ahead, um, I'm gonna mix up the paints first, just so they're all ready. And let's see, I've got, this is a long, this is a four. I could do my long round actually, my four long round and probably go um, to a six as well because I want it to be loose and I don't wanna have too many brush marks or any. Um, but the bigger the brush, the more area I can work. And also here's another, these are both Princeton, by the way, Velvet Touch. This is this cute little dagger striper. I have a smaller one, hang on. That I think I will use rather than this one. Uh, this is a quarter inch dagger by Princeton. It's a Neptune. I think that'll be fun as far as painting some of those leaves. They're really cool. If you don't have one of these, they're just, oh, I just love the marks that you can get from these. So let's get started mixing up some paint first. I want to have that ready to go. Um, I'm going to start by getting this coral, such pretty color. Um, and this I squeezed out some fresh there, so it's pretty thick. I like the, the thickness of that, it's kind of like a cream. So keep that tucked away in the back of your head. If you don't have an understanding of paint to water ratio, I did a video and I can See if I can link that in the description below. But yeah, it'll show you the paint to water ratio. It is really important to get a handle on that. I want some of this Opera Rose. This is Windsor & Newton. It's a little crumbly. 
Um, this all was dried in here and I just rehydrated it by spritzing it before I got started painting. Um, I wanna have some of this red. I'm pretty sure that's like a permanent red deep. Could be wrong about that. Could use a cadmium. Cadmium's gonna be chalkier. Um, you could use a pyrrole red. You could use a Windsor red. Um, any of those reds. And then, that being said, reds are really tricky. So I just added some cooler red. So there you've made a deeper red just by adding a cool to it, and that's nice. So it's really hard to get a good red when you're painting. Okay, let's get the green. I'm gonna get my hooker's green here. Not a very natural looking green, so you can add that's burnt sienna. Kind of naturalizes that a little bit. And on the other edge of this, I'm going to add some of that leaf green. Get a little variety there. And I'll probably reach for maybe even some of the grays and blues and um, drop that in while I paint. Okay. Ready? Let's get started. Um, where'd my bottle go? It's right here. So we're just, I already got a couple of drops already there. So I'm just gonna follow my little, my little design here and start squirting in very random. And if you can see it, I don't know if you can see it, but it really drips in random ways. So I'm pretty much that's a little bit too thick of a drop that will and this is going to be more of the buds over here so okay enough of that and let's get that let's get this guy to lead the way so I'm gonna just grab Grabbed a little of that, didn't mix them together, scooped up that, scooped up that, and then I'm really, that's a little, get a little of the, a little of that opera rose going, and you can see it's spread, and even coming in, Let's do this one. My little hole bind here for areas that aren't quite. Actually, that's too stiff. We'll do this one again. Just didn't quite get enough water in there. Now we now we see that paint spread. You see how that pushes through the water? Isn't that beautiful? And red and green are um, complementary, so I have to be careful about adding those greens. I don't want them to spread into the red and make gray. So let's add a little bit more water on that brush. And I'm gonna get some more of these deeper reds and drop it in. And a little touch of green is gonna give me some darker values as far as the red goes. 
So we can mix a little of those up and just start dropping them in. Look at that flow. Come up here. Going to my number six. Actually want a little more of that pink, that rose in here. And then I want very saturated, get more of that green because I want my little berries. Not all of them are super dark though, so let's vary it up, vary the berries. Do some deeper spots. It's still pretty wet, so I could wait a little bit longer and have that uh, not spread as much, which will be more effective for the berries. But in some of these spots where there's areas where it's dry, dry paper, I can do them. Still pretty wet on the, um, as far as adding these greens, but I think I'll go ahead and start touching in a little bit of them. Pretty thick paint. And I think I'll go to my four. That's a little bit fat on the number six. I want my leaves to be a little bit thinner. And let's go here and here. bit more green in there. Just kind of some random. I'm going to come over here to the blue side. Can't really see it, but uh, my cobalt blue, I want to get mixed up with some. There's my burnt sienna with some burnt sienna and get a gray and start working in some of these twigs. And let's come up even into some, those are light, but I'm going to go with a darker version. Just using the tip of that brush. And I'm going to put in a little bit of this green inside here and just let those colors kind of flow and mute. Just 
And remember what I said, that green is going to neutralize when it hits the red. So I know that it's graying down in there and I'm kind of intentionally doing that. And let's get a little bit more of these berries. drying out a bit so we can add a little bit more. A lot of water in here so I can soak up a bit of that before I put more paint in it. Same here. I'm seeing a little bit of puddling. You see that? You can soak it up with a thirsty brush. So I'm wanting to see some depth in here, um, more than I have right now. So what I think I'll do is, um, oops, keep my hand out of it, but add some splatter, which always is fun. And it's particularly important to have um, the right moisture. And I'm covering up, oops, don't want to take all the moisture away, but I want to cover up some of my light area there at the bottom. I don't want to... get the splatter all over there, but I do want to have some here. Thicker splatters. This is a great brush. Find a brush that you can splatter with. It's not all of them release the paint in the same way. And I think even adding some blue to that, get that a different Do you see all the splatters over here? Let's see what we can do about that. Is that gonna make it better or is it gonna ruin it? Let's just add a little paint to it and see if it just does anything. Well, 
that might not have been the best choice, but we're going to just let it, actually, I'm gonna soak some of it up with my paper towel. And actually, I think I wanna, Come in there too. Deep, 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 deep in here. Let's do some of that. There's a shadow violet. I wonder what that'll do if I put it in there. That's already dry over here. It's not going to do too much to spread, but... What did I do? I stuck with my brush down there anyway. Okay, I think I'm gonna just leave this alone and leave it to dry and we'll come back and see um, about doing some more work in that jar itself. I'm gonna pop back on here because I thought it would be interesting to add a little salt and there's still a couple of spots that are wet enough um, that it may make a difference and make some cool fun texture so there's still a sheen um, if it's too puddly not going to have anything happen. If it's too dry, it's just going to be kind of dots. There's a lot of puddling going on there, but I think I'm going to just add where I still see a sheen, and we'll just see what happens. It might not do a thing, but you don't know until you try. So let's see what happens after the paint dries and we take the salt off. So I've let this completely dry and that's very important to emphasize because if you start scraping the salt off too soon, you may not see that the paint underneath is dry all the way. Um, so you wanna make sure that it's completely dry. This is still a little buckly. Um, but I think it's okay. It's at a point where I, I'll be okay to scrape it off. And I'm just going to grab a, um, credit, you can grab a credit card, you know, any kind of hard, uh, plastic will do the trick. So let me actually set that aside and I'm just going to scrape that off and let's see if anything even happened. When you scrape it off, you can see that the salt is actually colored. So it picked up, it soaked up the paint that was sitting there on the paper. So let's get that off. There's a little bit of texture. I could have timed it better if I would have planned on making that part of this process. It probably would have... Uh, Benefited. That's kind of cool looking, actually. So I'm just going to dump this in the garbage. Not the painting, of course. But all that salt needs to come off. So let's see. Um, see if I can zoom in. Actually, move that a little bit. And let's zoom in on some of this other way. And you can see there is some texture happening in here and not so much in the other spots maybe down there in that little pink bottom area here there's some 
Um, but it, it did a little bit, so zoom back out. Hope I didn't make you go crazy there with that ultra super close up. <laughs> Okay, so now that we've got it to this point, now is the time to kind of decide what what other stuff might help this painting. I rather like this little blurred area, like they're kind of in the background. Um, I think adding just very subtly, adding some more of those berries, maybe just here and there, maybe dilute it a little bit and add some blue. Just kind of strengthen that in some of those spots. I like the little highlights of the berries too, so I'm gonna Get a couple that are a little more faded and then add a touch of dark to it. Soak up some of that and then just touch in on, oh, kind of a little too wet. Let that dry just a smidge and just do it right on the edge. A couple here and there. Strengthen the values a little bit and the ones up. All right, and then we can work on a little bit of this jar. And I'm gonna go down to a number two and grab some of these grays from before. And just do a little extra here and there. Remember I said we need to pay attention, so there's darker areas, and then you've got some highlights where the light's hitting the jar. So I'm just going to add some darks, kind of strengthen that line. Add some greens. A little bit more. This one kind of has a line coming down. And just a couple of touches of dark here and there. Pulling from the these are dried up, but I can re-moisturize that pretty easy. I don't want that line to be super, super hard, but it's kind of nice to have a hard edge on that outer part. I've got a little bit of curve here. I don't want to get too carried away and fussy about this on the jar, but just adding a touch here and there is going to boost the, I guess, the believability of it. I need more of the blue in there. A little too dark, I can soak it up with my brush, which is what I did there. It's too blue. Gray that down a little bit. I'm liking how that looks, so let's do a little more of this bluey gray over here. Just some squiggly lines to Indicate a 
Let's go dark in here. Okay, um, I want to get a little bit darker still. In some spots. More of that bluish gray. Hot tip too, if you want a straight line, which I didn't do a very good job showing you there, you pull your whole arm, pull your whole arm. It uh, makes it a lot easier. And sometimes also it's easier to pull it toward your body. So just pulling my whole hand I'm just going to do a little and this is probably still wet so I don't want to drag my hand through it. Um, I'm going to do just a little bit on the lower, pulling my whole arm down. There's also lines inside that label, but before I do that, I'm going to get a little bit of this ochre, yellow ochre, and get my titanium or Chinese white, I think this is, and get kind of a muted yellow or a more pastel color yellow. And then I am want to get this a little bit wet first just to soften the lines so it's not super hard edged. This over here is a little bit more vibrant, so I could add a touch of that in there, which was, I think, burnt sienna. Brighten it up a bit. Maybe even a little more. And maybe a little more of another yellow. I think that's lemon yellow. Let's kind of dab that in. Given a little variety. So, um, in the picture, in the reference photo, this is dark with the white lettering. I can attempt to do that, um, which I may. I may, 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 may. I'm going to get a little more of this purpley gray, add some blue to that. Maybe darker blue. Oops, that was purple. Um, and it was purple, so I can add a touch of, oh shoot, that's the phthalo blue. Um, scoop that up. I'm gonna go instead with ultramarine, burnt sienna. Oh my gosh, <laughs> I am so turned around. I'm going to go with Ultramarine. I think that's my Burton Sienna. And get that to a value that's dark enough. To do these uh, inside lines. 
dropping down though to a number one. That's a number one, but um, that's older, so the tip isn't as sharp like this one. It's got a nice sharp tip on it. This time I'm gonna start on this side so I don't drag my hand through it. I'm just gonna touch a little bit over here. Problem with these smaller brushes is they don't hold a lot of paint and water. So you kind of have to re-dip your brush in the paint more often. So I don't want it to be too watery because I'm gonna get too thick of a line. So I want to, it needs to be just the right amount of paint to water. And I'm just going to start here in the corner and be brave and pull my hand very carefully. Just drag my, I'm not going like this. I'm going to come to the side here and I'm going to pull that toward me. I'm going to pull this toward me. And I'm going to pull this down. And I've got just enough paint on my brush. Okay. Okay, um, I think I want to strengthen this, maybe this little side here. Give it a little extra. Um, I'm going to go ahead and fill this in. And we'll just see how it goes. So I've got that mix of ultramarine. I should have got this wet probably. Um, ultramarine, blue, deep, and um, burnt sienna. We're just going to do, do it like it's shown in the picture. And I'm thinking I should have done a bigger brush too. Uh, <laughs> sometimes you get yourself started and it's, it's kind of a too late thing. It's okay. I'll just keep going full body on this and fill in that middle area and just see what happens. It's not going to affect it too much. I don't believe. Okay, so there's that. That needs to completely dry. Um, this little thing we can just kind of Do something like that and leave it. I did say leave it and then I came right back into it. Great. There we go. Okay, so I think as far as the lettering goes, I'm going to add a little bit more burnt sienna to that. And we can have it a little bit more diluted. And just try not to get too precious with the lettering. And I'm just going to really 
try my hardest not to mess around with that because I did that before in a previous painting and I completely fouled the letters up and it really ruined the whole painting. So Okay, so let's make sure this is dry and I can come back and see if I can lift out some of the pencil lines in there. And then I'm gonna take some gouache and put in the lettering for that um, Tuscany label up there. Okay, so let's see, this is dry. I think before I do that gouache, I will see if I can get any of those pencil lines erased. Make sure my eraser is clean. I have had that happen before where you go onto a white area of your paper to just erase a line and there's there's pencil on your eraser it's not pristine so it's always best to check so i'm just gonna kind of go over that real lightly and take out what i can anything that the paint has gone over won't come up but we can get enough up there from that, then it looks um, better than having that pencil in there. Okay, so that's good. Now, I'm gonna move this out of the way for a sec. And I have gouache in, in this little container, but I don't want it contaminated with other color. So I'm gonna just get a little, don't need very much of it. Just a little dab will do ya. And I'm gonna get my brush wet. I wanna do this once. So I'm gonna get this as much to the consistency that will be easy to write those words in and not have any excess moisture on the ferrule of my brush because that can drop in a little bit more water it's about a again a thick cream And I'm gonna start out. It's almost too big of a brush, but I don't have anything smaller at this point. A zero or even a smaller one than that might be better, but we're gonna just work with what we have. And I'm gonna eyeball it. And just very carefully Try not to misspell it. I've also done that before. I actually did that one time when I was signing my name. I forgot the A in mode. So it became mod. And I had done it in permanent ink. Yep. Okay, Tuscany. And we're just going to really pull Tuscany candle. There you go. That worked. Um, happy about that. So, okay. And now the question becomes do I want to put ink around this or not? Because that is always my temptation. I like the way it looks. It kind of gives a little bit of a different 
feeling to it. So I think I am going to do that. What the heck? We're going to get this little Kurataki marker uh, brush pen. I use this a lot, and I'm just going to start by not putting my hand in that, but I'm going to do some little marks and just see if that adds anything or not. Hopefully I enhance it rather than make it an utter failure. It's not going to be an utter, utter failure because we've learned something from it. Not too many in here, but a couple. Just a few little marks here and there. It's not going to hurt anything, I guess. Very light-handed what I'm doing it, too. Again, I'm dragging my hand when I do that. Little fine line down here. I think a little shadow under there might benefit this too. So let me grab a. There's the picture, there's the painting, and I'm going to grab just a little bit of. Some of this gray blue and with the number six round pick up a little bit of a purpley blue and let's see let's come this way Black pen was still a little wet, which is fine. Come right up under there. Fade that out a bit. Shadow's going to be stronger at the base of this. wet I can keep on charging in a little bit of that we'll make a little bit of that pink come down in there soften that up a little bit Let me 
you don't want to mess with it too much. There is, however, and I'm going to touch in a little bit of water. Um, something I forgot I wanted to do was kind of splatter some white in there. And I'll do that with the gouache. So let's get that ultra cool. A little bit of pink in there isn't too bad either. Let's do that. Um, a little bit too big of drops there. Just touch in a little bit of this uh, splatters of this gouache. And since we're on the splatter train here, let's get a little bit more, now that it's all dry, this will stand out a little bit more too. Just this beautiful magenta. Add a little bit of red to that. Deepen it up. And a little bit more water on there. And I'm gonna call that done. So last thing will be to add a little signature to that. And I'll do that with the little more of a blue gray. A little more of a blue. I do like to sign these sometimes with um, marker, but I think this time I'll go with a gray. More of a gray. And we're just gonna sign it off to the side. the A and my little fishy. All right, I hope you guys like this video. I will link in the description below the, uh, I'll try to get the paint colors that I used and link to them in Amazon. Um, also, the paper, I'll look for the paper and I am going to get a link for the video on the paint to water ratio as well. So look for that in the description below. And if you aren't already subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you will see when I have another video or other videos that um, come up. Okay, it was great painting with you guys. I hope you have a great day. Happy painting. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.